Hello. Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about equivalent fractions and also simplifying fractions. Uh, the best way of talking about uh, many topics in maths is by visualizing them or having a picture in your head of what it means. And with fractions, there's no better way of doing that than have things like pizza. So I'm going to have three friends, Marion, I like the name Marion, also Halima, I like the name Halima as well, and also Bert, I like the name Bert as well. And they each buy a, guess what, pizza, because they're hungry. Now, Marion, she chops her pizza straight in half. So if we do a fraction representing Marion's pizza, it's going to have two on the bottom in the denominator position. Now she eats half her pizza and I've shaded the half she eats. Because she's eaten one of her pieces, one goes on the top. She's eaten half her pizza basically. Now Halima likes chopping pizza. So she chops her pizza into four pieces or quarters. So when we do the fraction for Halima's pizza, we put four on the bottom. Now she eats two of the slices shaded in here. So two goes on the top in the numerator position of her fraction. She's eaten two quarters. Now Bert absolutely loves chopping pizza. So he not only chops it into quarters, but he chops it into eight slices. He chops it into eighths. So on his fraction, we put eight in the denominator position. Now Bert eats four of his slices. So we put four in the numerator position. And a trick question is, who's eaten the most pizza? Neither of them have, because they've all eaten exactly the same amount of pizza. They've eaten different numbers of slices, but they've eaten the same amount of pizza. And this is what equivalent fractions mean. These fractions showing the amount of pizza they've eaten they're different, aren't they? They're different fractions. They're not the same fraction, but they represent the same amount of pizza. And that's what equivalent means. Okie dokie. You might notice that actually we can turn Marion's fraction into Halima's fraction by multiplying by two. But we have to multiply the top and the bottom by the very same number. Similarly, we can turn Halima's fraction into Bert's fraction by multiplying by two, but we've got to do the same for the numerator, the top, and the denominator, the number at the bottom. So you can turn a fraction into any other equivalent fraction by multiplying the top and the bottom number, but you have to use the same number for the top and the bottom. So let us have a look. We can also put a line under here. We can do the same by dividing. So for example, you've got four eighths. If we divide the top by two, well, we're gonna get two, aren't we? And if we divide the bottom by two, we're gonna get four which was Halima's fraction, wasn't it? We've put Bert's on the left this time just to show the division. And now if we divide two by two and we divide four by two, we'll end up with, that was Marion's fraction, wasn't it? Which was a half. So we can also divide the top and the bottom of any fraction to get an equivalent fraction, but it's got to be the same number for the top and the bottom. It must be the same number for the top, the numerator, and the bottom, the denominator. 
Let's try that for another fraction, shall we? So for example, the names are way up top, but that was, who was that? Hmm, that was Marion, wasn't it? Marion, Halima and Bert each get another pizza next week, their next pizza day. And this time, Marion chops it into three for a bit of variety. As a fraction, she's topped it into three pieces. So at the bottom of the fraction in the denominator position, we write three. This time, she's not so hungry, so she just eats one slice. The shaded slice is one, so that goes at the top. She's eaten one third. Now, Halima, as we know, likes chopping a lot more. So she chops her pizza into six slices. Six goes on the bottom. But this time she eats two slices, so two goes on the top. Now, Bert really likes chopping, so he goes chopping absolutely crazy. And then he chops it into, oh my gosh, how many pieces is he really chopping this into? It's a bit over the top, isn't it? So he has chopped his pizza into 12 pieces. So 12 goes on the bottom. And he's going to eat one, two, three, four. It's a bit messy, but you see he's eaten four pieces. So four goes on the top. So who's eaten the most pizza? Of course, they've all eaten the same amount of pizza. They've eaten different numbers of slices, but the same amount of pizza. So these fractions, they're not the same, but they represent the same amount of pizza. So they are equivalent. This time we could go from Marion slice to Halima slice by multiplying by two. We have to do the same to the top and the bottom. So times two, one times two is two, three times two is six. We go from Halima's fraction to Bert's fraction again by multiplying by two. Two times two is four. Six times two is 12. Done. And of course, we can go back by dividing, can't we? So we could start with Bert's fraction. And we could go to Halima's fraction by dividing by two. Four divided by two is two. 12 divided by two is six. We could then divide by two again. Ba, 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 ba. Two divided by two is one. Six divided by two is three. Marion's fraction. So you see you can multiply or divide the top and the bottom of a fraction by any number you want to get an equivalent fraction, but it has to be the same number. So we could go completely crazy, couldn't we? We could go half. I know. Let's multiply the top by something completely crazy. What about three million? That's quite crazy. I like to have that in my bank account, actually. And we'll do the top and the bottom times, times three bleep, 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 million. Bleep, bleep, bleep. And then we get one times three million is three million. These are commas, you see, they're not decimal points. And then two times three million is six bleep, 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 million. So three million, six millionths, is the same as a half. It's an equivalent fraction, a rather crazy equivalent fraction, but an equivalent fraction nevertheless. Now we can use the idea of equivalent fractions to simplify fractions. So for example, let us take the fraction five twenty-fifths. Now, we notice we can look at the numerator and the denominator. What times table are 5 and 25 both in? They're in the 5 times table. So we can use that. We can divide 25 by 5 and we can divide 5 by 5. We have to do the same to the top and the bottom. And 5 divided by 5 is 1. 25 divided by 5 is 5. We simplified 5 25ths into one fifth 
by dividing the top and the bottom by five, and one fifth is an equivalent fraction of five twenty fifths. Another example. Nine. Uh, three. I'm not sure that's true. Yes, it is. Of course it is. A little senior moment there. So nine twenty fourths. We want to simplify that. Well, we can look at nine and twenty four. What times table are these both in? They're both in a three times table, are they not? So we can divide the top by three, divide the bottom by three. Nine divided by three is three. 24 divided by three is eight. So we simplified nine twenty-fourths into three eighths by dividing the top and the bottom by three. Okay, let's do another one. Should we do another one? We'll do one more, one more. And then we have, what about this one? 30, one hundredths. They're both in the 10 times table, aren't they? So we can divide the top by 10, the bottom by 10, and that will be three tenths. You see, we divided the top and the bottom by 10 to turn 30 hundredths into an equivalent fraction of three tenths, and thus we have simplified it. With simplifying, we want to divide. We always divide because we want the fraction to get smaller, don't we? That's what simplifying is, where the top and the bottom number, the numerator and the denominator get smaller. If you're not sure, and the top and the bottom are even numbers, these are even numbers because they're ending in eight, numbers that end in um, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 are even. If you're not sure, chop them in half. They'll simplify. We can chop 48 in half, can't we? Because 48 divided by 2 is, <laughs> put my thinking cap on, 24. 128 divided by 2, ooh, that's even more difficult, and that is, mm -mm -mm, 64. We've chopped them in half. Let's chop them in half again. Keep chopping them in half. Why not? That's a good way to do it. 24 chopped in half is 12. 64 chopped in half is 32. Let's chop them in half again. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 32 divided by 6. By 2, sorry. 32 divided by 2. I'm getting carried away is 16. Then we can do it again. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. We've chopped, divided the top and the bottom by 2 repeatedly, and thus we've turned 48 128 into 3H, and we've simplified it. So I do hope that's been um, a useful explanation of equivalent fractions and um, simplifying fractions. And as always, draw your pizzas. Um, if you're not sure how to visualize it, and that will help and do lots and lots of problems. Thank you so much for listening. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.